Coming up on SLU News 22. The business school has new leadership. Budget talks on Capitol Hill break down. And unrest continues to build in Egypt. Plus, national news and weather. Live from the Bush Student Center, this is SLU News 22. Good evening, I'm David Keller filling in for Katrina Canyon. And I'm Lucy Glazer. Thank you for joining us this, e this evening. The Business School has a new Assistant Dean as well as Director of Master's Programs. The, Cook, the John Cook School of Business has announced the appointment of James Bast as the new Assistant Dean. Bast is an experienced entrepreneurial MBA administrator with proven re results in enrollment management, operating full-time, part-time, weekend, and corporate programs. He has directed programs at the Hale U.S. Bank College of Business at Northern Kentucky University, the University of Cincinnati, and Xavier University. Slew Susan Farr, Ph.D., compared three types of fat, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, and butter in mice at age related to memory impairment, and found that mice perform better on memory recognition tests and mazes than other mice. According to Farr, olive oil reversed the signs of memory deficiency in mice that represent a model of early Alzheimer's disease. The research is supported in the VA Medical Center in St. Louis, in, and it will be published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Professor Angela Dries, Professor em Emerta in the Department of Theological Studies, was just awarded the 2012 Distinguished Teaching Award from the American Catholic Historical Association. The award is presented each year to a professor who has shown a high commitment to teaching beyond the expect, expected requirements of the position and promoted Catholic studies from one generation of scholars to another. In order to receive the award, scholars must be nominated and approved by a vote. Professor Dries does not know who nominated her. She will officially receive the award on January 7th at the Association's annual conference in Chicago. Tomorrow on November 21st from 1 to 3 p.m., SLU will host an Inside Out Speaker Series featuring writer Ken Lamberton at the Diagnostic and Correctional Center in Bonterre, Missouri. Lamberton will read and discuss essays from his first book, Wilderness and Razor Fire, A Naturalist's Observations from the Prison. This book won the 2002 Burroughs Medal for Nature Writing. David is in the weather center now with a look at our first forecast. Today was a huge change from yesterday and had to pull out the coat and the umbrella. How much more rain do we have to deal with, David? Well, it was very chilly today. Temperatures started off warm early this morning, but they fell quickly as we headed into the afternoon hours. It is 42 degrees outside right now here at SLU with a temperature a dew point right around 40 degrees. It has warmed up a little bit since it started raining. We were in the upper 30s around noontime, but this evening have warmed into the 40s. Outside across the region, it's 43 degrees at Lambert International, 41 in Chesterfield, and 45 in Litchfield, there is some rain across the area, but it has begun to move out of the region right now. Looking to our north and west, it is very chilly with temperatures in the 30s and 20s across Iowa. But to our south, we are watching a cold front pushing away from the city. And south of that front, temperatures are very warm with temperatures right around 70 degrees in Arkansas and Tennessee. There's that rain pushing off to the northeast towards Chicago, but we will be watching for more rain to fill in across the area as we head through the overnight hours with rain showers developing once again. Temperatures will be uh, falling to around 40 degrees overnight tonight, and we will be watching for that rain to return as we head towards tomorrow afternoon. And we have plenty of rain to talk about. We'll talk about that in the full forecast coming up in a few minutes. Lucy? Thanks, David. On, other, on another note, Dr. James A. DeClue Sr., former president of the St. Louis chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and one of the first black optometrists in Missouri, died on Wednesday, November 16, 2011, of congestive heart failure while in hospice care at St. Alexis Hospital. He was 87 and lived in Creve de Coeur. DeClue is survived by his three sons and his daughter. Visitation will be from 4 to 7 p.m. Monday, November 21st at Austin Lane Mortuary, and the funeral will be held on Tuesday, November 22nd at 11 a.m. St. Louis Boy Scouts collected about 1.8 million cans in its annual food drive yesterday. The amount is less than 2.1 cans collected, or 2.1 million cans collected last year. The drive is run by the Boy Scouts Great, Great St. Louis Council and gathers food from 46 fire stations throughout the area. It is considered to be one of the largest day, drive, day drives in the United States. 
On Thanksgiving Day, Ameren will host its annual Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is known as one of the best parades in the country. The parade features dozens of floats and balloons, in addition to marching bands from across the area. The Harlem Globetrotters have, named, have been named as honorary grand marshals for this year's event. The parade starts at 8.45 a.m. on Thursday, November 24th at the corner of Washington and 4th and then proceeds south on 4th Street to Market and then heads west on Market Street and concludes on 14th Street in downtown St. Louis. For more information, go to their website at www.christmasinstlouis.org. The day shoppers everywhere look forward, for, forward to more than Thanksgiving itself is quickly arriving. On Monday, November 14th, CBL and Associates announced that Chesterfield, Mid-Rivers, South County Center, St. Clair Square, and West County Center malls will all be opening at 12.01 a.m. this Friday the 25th. On a more somber note, on November 15th, 20-year-old Shelby Dasher admitted to beating her 13-month-old son, Tyler Dasher, to death in Afton. It is reported that Shelby came home intoxicated and assaulted her child when he would not stop crying. While the exact charge is still up for debate, secondary murder is most likely, as it is, as it is termed as hot-blooded murder, whereas first degree requires previous planning of the crime. When we come back, the Budget Super Committee is reaching a deadline. And tensions continue to rise in Egypt. Plus more international and national news. We'll be right back. He doesn't watch how to catch a predator because he already knows how to. He doesn't make wishes. He makes wishes come true. And he is said to be the inspiration for Neil Diamond's solitary man simply because no one else is that interesting. I don't always watch news magazines on closed circuit television. When I do, I prefer Mondays and Midtown. Welcome back. Filling at the, up at the gas tank feeling a little easier lately? The recent survey found that United States gasoline prices dipped by nearly a nickel per gallon ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday as cheaper crude and slumping demand kept pressure on the cost. An average price of the self-serve regular at U.S. filling stations fell to $3.38 per gallon, down 4.8 cents in the past two weeks. According to the new Lindbergh survey, gasoline prices have now dropped more than 8 0.6 cents per gallon over the past month. The latest Lundberg survey came to about 2,500 stations on Friday. It found that the highest average gas prices in, lower, in the lower 40 state, 48 states in San Francisco at 3.78 per gallon, and the lowest in Albuquerque, New Mexico, at 2.96. The average price around St. Louis came in to be around 3.06, which in some places is as low as 2.99. Conceding that talks on a grand budget deal are near failure, concessional leaders on Sunday pointed fingers at each other as they tried to deflect blame for their inability to figure out a way to lower the federal deficit without having to rely on automatic, automated cuts. The testy exchanges which dominated Sunday talk shows made clear that leaders in both parties now see the so-called so sequester, a term meaning automatic spending cut, as the most likely solution to reduce the federal deficit by $1.2 trillion over the next 10 years instead of the negotiated package of spending reductions and tax increases they have been unable to achieve over the last 10 weeks. 
Democrats blame the Republicans for their unwillingness to walk away from a new no taxes, from a no new taxes pact they signed at the request of a conservative anti-tax group, arguing that American, the American public realizes that no grand deal could be reached without a combination of spending cuts and new tax revenues. A California university placed two of its police officers on administrative leave Sunday because of their involvement in the pepper spraying of passively sitting protesters while the, while the school's chancellor, chancellor accelerated a task force investigation into the incident and made calls for her re resignation. Last Friday, students protesting the University of Davis in Northern California were sprayed with pepper spray by area police. The video captured on tape was circulated widely on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter on Saturday. The University of Davis Faculty Association has called on the University Chancellor, Linda Cathy, to resign due to, the fac due to faculty leadership. The Chancellor states that while she has no plans to resign, she will be forming a task force to investigate the police action. Fire crews in Reno, Nevada are focusing on lingering hot spots and beginning repair work on the hillside blackened by a wildfire that destroyed 32 homes. Reno Fire Chief Mike Hernandez says the fire was spreading at least of at least a rate of 30 miles per hour because of gale force winds. Sierra Fire Protection District Captain Mark Reagan says Sunday that the 2,000 acre fire remained 80% contained. Fire crews are getting help from a snowstorm that has hit the area. Reagan says state officials are reviewing damages to determine how much government assistance will be needed. Reagan says workers, workers are repairing hillsides and will recede areas where vegetation was lost to prevent mudslides. Nearly 10,000 people were forced to leave their homes when the fire erupted Friday. Most people were able to return Saturday night. Reuters reports that Russian hackers may have sabotaged a water pump in what's being described as a first foreign cyber attack on U.S. utility infrastructure. An attack damaged the hardware and software in a Springfield, Illinois water utility on November 8th. The hackers used networked credentials stolen from an industrial software developer to remotely access a pump and burn it out. However, there were systems in place that, such that the event had no impact on the residents. USA Today reports that Egyptian riot police clashed for a second day with rock-throwing protesters, demanding that, the, demanding that the ruling military quickly announce a date to hand over power to an elected government. The clashes followed a day of violence in Cairo and elsewhere in the country in which at least two people were killed and hundreds wounded. They were the worst clashes between police and protesters in months since the revolution earlier this year. Libyan, ministers, Libyan minister Mohamed Shamam has told the International Criminal Court that Libya will not turn over the, the son of Muhammad Gaddafi to the IC, ICC. Instead, Sif al-Islam Gaddafi will be tried at home for the crimes that he committed against Libyan people. Saif Ali Gaddafi was captured over the weekend and is wanted by the ICC on charges of crimes against humanity. ICC prosecutor Luis Moreno Ocampo told the AP on Saturday that he will travel to Libya on Monday for talks with Libya's International National Transition Council to discuss where the, tribal, or where the trial will take place. Ocampo stated that he just wants to ensure that Saif Ali Assam Gaddafi has a fair trial. Coming up next, David has your extended forecast. Well, we are tracking some much cooler weather for the next couple of days and as well as plenty of rain in the forecast as well as some heavy rain. But there are changes as we head towards Thanksgiving and I think you'll like those changes. Stay tuned. The forecast coming up right after the break. Smoke.
Welcome back. Chief Meteorologist David Keller is with us now. Yesterday it was very warm, very windy, and today it will be cold and rainy. What's, are we going to be able to enjoy some time outside soon, anytime soon? Well, uh, Lucy, unfortunately it does look like the weather's not really going to cooperate over the next couple of days as there is more clouds, rain, and cooler temperatures in the forecast. However, if you're outside early this morning, you probably thought it was going to be a nice day. We had temperatures start off near 60 degrees. In fact, our high temperature was 62 degrees here at SLU 62 out at Lambert. That occurred well before sunrise. And then we had a cold front push through, and that has dropped temperatures into the 30s and 40s. Our low actually occurred early or late this morning, right before noontime. And then we've warmed up since with temperatures now across the area in the middle 40s. Tem colder temperatures lingering off to our north and west where they are below freezing across much of Nebraska and Iowa. Some of that air will be spilling our way over the next couple of days, but our attention is to the south where it is near 80 degrees over eastern Texas and Louisiana. That air is going to be trying to shift northward over the next couple of days, pushing over a cold front that has slid, slid to our south and has now stalled out. There, do, there we go, there's this little satellite and radar. There is that cold front sitting down across southern Missouri. We're going to be watching that because it will be our weather maker as we head through the next couple of days. That front is stalled to our south, and as that warm air tries to push back towards the front, that's generating some showers across the region this evening. I do think we'll see mostly dry conditions overnight tonight, but I can't rule out another scattered shower or thunderstorm, especially as we head towards tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, that front settles just a little bit further south, so we will be on the northern edge of that chance for showers with the more widespread rain and thunderstorms remaining well to our south. By Monday night, though, a storm system will be developing along that front and pushing that front back to the north as a warm front, and that means showers and thunderstorms will be developing and widespread across the area, bringing some heavy rain to parts of the region as this low pressure system pushes off to the north and east. That'll bring that chance for showers and thunderstorms into the St. Louis area. Uh, the most widespread rains look to be Monday night into Tuesday, and we could see some heavy rain across the area, especially along the I-44 corridor from southwest Missouri into central Ar Illinois, where we could see as much as two inches of rain with the entire area seeing at least an inch of rain before this all said and done Tuesday afternoon. So we will be watching that as we head through into the middle of the week. But for overnight tonight, a few scattered showers around the area, maybe an isolated thunderstorm, especially to the southeast of St. Louis. But most areas seeing lows right around 40 degrees, 40 here in St. Louis, 39 in St. Charles, 41 in Belleville with those scattered showers in the area. By the time you head off to classes tomorrow morning around 8 a.m., temperatures will still be hovering right in the lower 40s. 42 degrees, mostly cloudy. There is a chance for an isolated shower, but I do think we'll spend most of the day dry, although very cloudy and chilly. By noontime, 49 degrees with very light northwest winds at 2 to 5 miles per hour. And your high temperature tomorrow afternoon, only 53 degrees as clouds will thicken as we head into the evening and rain will be on the increase as we head into the overnight hours. Now as we head through the next seven days, it does dry out after we get through Tuesday. And here's your Thanksgiving forecast, sunny skies with a high temperature around 64 degrees. Unfortunately, it does look like it's going to be another windy day. So even when we get the warm temperatures back, we still just can't escape those those winds as they will be howling on Thursday, but at least it won't be raining and temperatures will be a little bit more tolerable than over the next couple of days with 53 tomorrow, 54 Tuesday, 53 on Wednesday. Again, nice on Thanksgiving. And then as we head towards next weekend, yet another storm system pushes in and it looks like we could see some more heavy rain. So getting plenty of rain across the area. Thanks, David. I guess we'll be keeping those umbrellas handy for the next couple Definitely. of days. When we come back, we'll take a look at entertainment and technology news.
We are all. 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 Billikins. 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 Welcome back. Twilight's new Breaking Dawn grossed $72 million, making it the third best opening day in the history behind this year's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 and 2009's Twilight Saga New Moon. The, the new Happy Feet film, Happy Feet 2, brought in a disappointing $5.9 million on Friday with, the, with hopes that the movie finished the weekend at $22 million. On Friday night, film star Myla Kunis fulfilled her pro promise to attend the um, to attend the Marine Corps ball with Sergeant Scott Moore, Moore, a Marine who was serving in Afghanistan. Posted a video on YouTube asking Kunis for a date to the Marine Corps ball. Kunis accepted the invitation soon after the video was posted. TMZ re is reporting that Robin Gibb, the legendary singer and songwriter for the 70s pop group The Bee Gees, has been diagnosed with liver cancer. Gibb was reportedly diagnosed a few months back but was rushed to the hospital in London earlier this week. Gibb's representative reports that this has been a difficult time but that the Bee Gees co-founder is in good spirits. If you own an Android phone, you may want to think twice before downloading that new app. It could be malware. The Juniper Threat Center reports that the Android has a 472% increase in malware since July 2011. Android apps are not are not vetted before they appear on Google's App Store. Anyone with, deve with a developer's account and $25 can post applications. The Global Threat Center believes that the same persons who used to write malicious code for older versions of the Windows mobile platforms have shifted to the Android. It looks like you're going to have to find new uses for your CDs. That is, if you have any left, CNET reports that with Apple likely foregoing optical drives across all or most of its MacBooks, and Ultrabooks doing the same, the optical drive will gradually spin away into obscurity. CNET's Brooke Kruther said that it, that it would have faded away more quickly if not for focus groups expressing dislike of the concept. However, Steve Jobs, never being one to listen to focus groups, presented a new computer without optical drives and the consumers embraced the new future feature. Because of this, the rest of the industry is following Apple's lead. Well, I don't know what we're going to do without those CDs, but it certainly has been a staple of every computer I've ever yeah. used. Certainly. Hopefully it won't rain on our parade anymore. <laughs> but um, speaking of rain, how is the weather looking this week? Well, it, unfortunately, it is looking pretty rainy. As we, we had some rain showers this afternoon. It has cleared out for the time being, but we will see more rain developing, especially later Monday into Tuesday with heavy rain around the area. And we can't rule out a thunderstorm either, but no severe weather expected. By Thanksgiving, though, it does clear out and warm up. Sunny skies with a high of 64 for your Thanksgiving afternoon. But watch out for the winds. It does look like it is going to be on the windy side ahead of another storm system for next week. But so far, no snow showing up in the forecast. So All right. don't have anything to worry about there. I won't need my snow shovel. Well, that's our show for the night. We hope that you enjoyed watching this evening. We'll see you back here in two weeks as we'll be taking next week off for Thanksgiving. And don't forget, you can always get the latest news online at slutv.slu.edu or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Have a great night and have a great Thanksgiving break.